sorry everyone for the technical issues. Um, let me introduce myself again. I'm Hanifa from Omah Library. I will be the host tonight. And we're going to have Gary Yao. He's originally from Malaysia and just recently moved to London. Uh, he will be presenting about Project XYZ, a collective platform that he found with his mates to experiment and discuss arch architecture. Further about the topic will be explained in a bit by Nirma, our moderator tonight. Uh, we are also joined by Laura Sharif as the advisor of Oma Library, also by Hazik Arifin and other panelists of Tua Tua Kaladi. Uh, I really look forward for the discussion later. Uh, before we start, allow me to introduce Oma Library and what we do here. Just like our name, Oma Library is a library located in Jakarta housing books, mainly about architecture. And we are aiming to be a melting point between students, academics, and also practitioners by providing books uh, with our collection and also by publishing our own and also by discussions like this. Our topic are varied from theory, history, criticism, method, and also investigation. Uh, Previously, we have held hundreds of classes, and from uh, since this year, we started to upload them one by one to our website, and you can check them on omahlibrary.org. Uh, so, Atua Kaladi is not our only ongoing classes. We are happy to announce that we also have Hermits of Architecture. Which, relate, uh, which related to self-development of a designer approach with the five year two of thought by Aristotle. This is the perfect uh, class for you who maybe wonder about your role in the society or your position in your journey of architecture. Hopefully this will help to strengthen your root in practicing architecture. If you're interested, the next class will be on Thursday uh, about epistem or the knowledge presented by Undi Gunawan. And we also have Genesis of Design Method. This is for you who are maybe stuck in your creative process. We will invite designers from Indonesia, Singapore, and Malaysia uh, to share their personal and unique process of finding their own design method. Uh, hopefully from this class, we can gain clues on how to work on ours. In the next class, we will have Yang Pauline from Singapore who will be talking about city and rural. And the next, we will have Perjalanan Mengenal Indonesia or Journey in Understanding Indonesia that will discuss Indonesian traditional or vernacular architecture. On next Friday, we will have Yoris and Aleph, who will share about Rumah Baluk Bengkayang or Baluk Bengkayang House from West Kalimantan, which, which have very unique form and typology. And on the last Friday of the month, we will have Darah Muda or the Young Blood uh, that invites young designers to share their process in architecture their high and also their low. Hopefully it will be a search of inspiration and also uh, encouragement for the peer or younger generation in building their own career. If you're interested, you can register to the link that I will share after this in the chat room. Or you can also check our Instagram at Omah Library. Now, before we invite Nirma to introduce the topic and also the presenter for today, I would like to remind everyone to turn the mic during presentation. And later for the discussion, uh, feel free to raise your hand or share your opinion or question in the chat room. Uh, we will invite you to speak if you like to. And uh, you can also share your question in Bahasa Indonesia. We will try our best to interpret. Okay, without further ado, I will fight Nirma to take over. 
Uh, hi, my name is Nirma from my library, and I will be a moderator for the next event. Tua Tua Kaladi or The Old Mind, episode two with Gary Yao from Project XYZ. Uh, before we invite Gary to talk in this session, I want to give a little introduction first. Project XYZ is an architectural platform that organizing events such as podcasts, moderations, workshops, and roundtable discussions. And other than that, which makes it more interesting is that they also have been actively involving in architectural competition, furniture, and installation designs. Um, and the person behind this amazing platform is Gary Yao, which is a founder of Project XYZ. And he recently got a master's degree from University of Stark Light, Glasgow, and currently living in London. And what I know from Gary based on what he do on Project XYZ is he tries to balance between architecture as a practical and architectural regulation, literation, or theoretically. Uh, what he wants to share tonight is also really interesting, I think. It's about how to be confident and brave to make much experiences from the young age, which I believe many people, especially young people, struggle with it. Young people are often to get a label as dumb and broke, Otherwise, this is actually a prime time for us to be bold and experimental. Put as many ideas and along the process, we could find a voice, perhaps our identity. And of course, through the process, there will be a situation where we're facing some options and we have to decide which one is to be discarded, ignored, or and achieve, achieved. And from Gary's point of view on what he experiences through various things happening at Project XYZ in this session, Gary will tell us his story on exploring things and searching for peer faces as a young designer. Or like what it calls on this event's title, it's about Gary's confession or love letter to architecture. All right. Without further ado, hi Gary, are you ready to confess to us? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not just confess. Maybe you will propose also. Uh, that comes to a point. Uh. <laughs> okay. Um. Right. The stage is yours now. Thank you so much. Um. Thanks, Nema and Hanifa, and also Omar Library and Rick for the invitation. It's really nice to, um speak to a lot of people again um, because it's been a while that I have finished my course um, in September and it has been a lot of uh, obstacles and a lot of challenges in um, moving from Glasgow all the way to and you know I shot I, I stay in Bristol for a very short term short, uh, short period of time and then now finally settled down in London um, lots of things happen. It's not just about like how I think philosophically and also how I see architecture in it, um, you know, from one, one, one side, but also from thinking about life philosophy and also the lessons that makes me realize so many things. Um, so maybe I can share my screen first and then we can talk about that. Um, right. So, hi, my name is Gary and I'm a co-founder of Project XYZ. So it's an architecture collective based in Malaysia. Uh, me and my partner, Amos, we founded this um, um, project, I would say, to, um, four years ago. Um, so the reason why we thought that we come up with XYZ, because, it, I mean, way before Project XYZ was named, uh, it was named. So we call it Project X because we thought that X is, could be, you know, unknown variables. We could do anything. I mean, from down to uh, nuts and bolts to uh, skyscrapers, we always quite interested to do everything. So, but, but in the end, I think Project X kind of like evolved into XYZ because of these uh, three dimensions, three axes in architecture and also um, how we see 3Ds. I, of course, um, in feelings, we have more than three dimensions, but somehow when it comes to design objects and uh, um, projects, we always uh, pivoted by these three dimensions and also axes. Um, when, when I was asked to you know, provide a title for the sharing session, and I think I don't feel I wanted to keep on sharing about the projects which I have 
uh, maybe share a few times. So I thought that to conclude the whole thing, you know, special, special for Omar and, <laughs> and Rurik. And I thought to, to come up with a very special sharing session that I would like to talk about um, things that we don't talk about in architecture. For example, money, time, resources, how to get projects. And of course, this, this sharing session is not about, it's not, it's not about, you know, teaching you how to get a, how to be a billionaire or millionaire in a project. I'm, that's why the young, dumb and broke comes in. <laughs> I'm, I'm not rich. I'm not making a lot of money from Project XYZ. Um, yeah, so therefore, I think that, you know, throughout the, for the past four years, makes me realize what can I say about the Project XYZ apart from the works or also the, the projects. Um, now re reflecting back, I think it's really young, dumb and broke. Um, first is I was young and then we were young. In a way, we started the first project like as a competition. Um, they are actually, there were actually some story because we submitted the competition, some issue with the university, then um, somehow our submission didn't manage to submit it. So we, me, Amos and I kind of like very angry about it because we did a lot of work on that competition. And then we feel very motivated and feel by this uh, quote unquote anger. Um, so we decided to say, okay, it doesn't mean that we are young, means you can't take us seriously. So we come up with the first project and all. Um, so that's why it's young. And then because you have this kind of a uh, young blood and also a very propelling uh, um, motivation. So you keep on doing it and until now. Um, even though XYZ has never been an official studio or company, but we keep it online and we keep it quite uh, casual. Um, the second thing dumb is because we thought that I, I, I was told by someone saying that, you know, whatever you are doing now is just wasted. Everything you will be waste goes to waste and you are not doing, you are not making any money. So that's why you are dumb. Um, true in a way, but then I just thought that dumb in a way also become very naive and you become more experimental and more open for all kinds of uh, opportunities, which I will later show uh, in my presentation. Um, bro, in the end, financially, we are not sustainable in a way, you know, since four years ago, we didn't really make a lot of money, but we are happy with what kind of profit that we get. It's not just about monetary terms, but it's about meeting new people, meeting um, new friends. So this is more of a journey, reflection and realization. Um, so again, we are not, I, I, I will not present the whole design process of the projects. Um, or floor plans, no. So uh, more of the taking of the context rather than the content. Um, so I have done my part one in Malaysia and when I was uh, in semester three or four, then me and Amos started to think, okay, let's do something. And then we make it um, like a more proper body of work. So we come up with Project X, like I said earlier, and then we slowly evolve into Project XYZ. And 2019, I decided to study in University of Strathclyde, like Glasgow. Um, it is sort of a life changing, I would say, because studying overseas and see things very differently. So um, since I left Malaysia, I did a lot of things online. Um, a, a, a lot of things actually, I did it with collaboratively with other people rather than Amos. So because Amos, he has his own plan as well. So we sort of embark into different kind of journey but still we still keep in touch and then talk about the xyz s you know quote unquote the, the the business model and 2020 because of covid we we i mean me and amos were part of the uh, lanai magazine so if you're interested feel free to check it out on instagram so it's a archicultural zine um in malaysia but we do publish it online as well um for the online copy it's free so you can always check it out and we do offer hard copies as well, mainly in Malaysia. So if you're interested, feel free to contact us and we will try our best to you know, send it over to anywhere. And like, like, like Nirma said, I also recently moved to London like a week ago. So it's, like, uh, it, it's been a very different life journey, I would say, because I, I wasn't, you know, I, I didn't really get a job, you know, uh, when I was settled down in London. Um, and then recently only got a job as an office manager in Unagru Architecture. Um, so it, it's, it's different because, because what I'm doing now is not really architecture in a way. And I'm not really touching a lot of AutoCAD or SketchUp or a lot of um, go through a lot of um, tiles, floorings or products designed with the client, but rather 
um, office manager, uh, a lot of planning, a lot of um, um, you know, internal, internal organization. So it's very fresh for me and also relevant to what I have been always interested in. Um, because my thesis is about ar architecture and business. So in the, in the end, that's where you can see the line draws, drawn between architecture and business, in between entrepreneurship, between um, finance, between money making. So that's where my interest is. Uh, but, but this sharing session is not really directly talking about that, but still part of the touching of the, the fringe of the business side. So I... I think, I think from what I realized from architectural education, we have been always talking about materials, um, light and shadow, about this kind of a hierarchy of space. Um, you know, a lot of people might be taking, you know, reference architecture equals to, let's say, D.K. Ching's uh, book, talking about walls, floors, and things. But for me, I think there are a lot of things. Those, those are, I would say, those are the content of architecture. When we talk about those are the technical terms or very specific or niche um, a vocabulary about architecture but in the end from the another side where we actually talk about business as well we have have to know what is the revenue to run a company what is the cost to run a company um what are the resources who, who can i get the renderer who can i draw the drawings who can i approach a client and things so that's where i realized the resources and organizational man, uh, management but that doesn't mean that I'm not interested in design i still like to bridge this um, designer and the manager role but that's where I always realize a, a good design can be done by anyone in a way. You know, you go to architecture school, 100 people, students, 100 can come out, 100 designs. I can say everyone also can done it, a good design. But how to present it is that's another story. Um, this is actually very interesting because, uh, like I said, I, I, once I reached uh, London, I didn't really have a job. I worked part-time as a waiter in the restaurant and somehow very lucky to meet a uh, a lecturer, a very pro, uh, proclaimed lecturer in uh, London. I won't, I won't say who. But, but he also told me something about this good design. It's actually not just about, you know, a design itself, but also the management part where the deliverables and logistics of the design. So that's where I realized, you know, about... And, 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 and this is strengthened me, this strengthened my mind to focus more on the economical perspective when we talk about time and money. And... In where, where, I, where I'm working now, Unagru, we use this uh, stream time. It's a website where you can monitor your time and project the timeline as well. It's a project management application. So in this sense, you can understand actually money is time and time is money. So because whatever you are investing, you as a professional, for example, you as a principal architect, one hour, let's say for the X amount of money, if you... Your, your meeting drag more than what you should have means you are paying more. You know, you, you, the client, if let's say not given, giving more money, then you, have, you are paying extra work. So there is actually very important to understand how much you wanted to give so that, you're not, you, so that the things are not underprovided, but yet you wanted to make sure that you are not underpaid. So there is this because time is money. That's is very, very significant for me in these few days' works. And also, I mean, before that, I already start to reflecting like since the first competition. Because usually for a competition, you only comp uh, you know, finish in three months. So within these three months, what's the project timeline? Two weeks for site visit, two weeks for site analysis. How many, how long do you need to produce a drawing? What's a presentation board? What's the requirement? Do you need to come up with any other criteria submissions? Or things like this. So therefore, I'm more interested in organizing that. Therefore, I always, um, I, I believe in go-to, you know, uh, to do very strong to-do behavior and attitude where if I want to do it, I'll do it. So for me, I won't do the design, of course. Most of the time, I will just come up with a big idea. And then I say, let's say, you know, in the in the next few slides, I will share like how I delegate my my tasks because I know who actually do things best. That and in that sense, then I know who can do it fast and who can do it comfortably, who can do it more quick, who can do it more efficient, and people are happy to do that. And I question myself: What is the purpose of this competition, for example, or this project? What's the benefit? What what's the drawback for me if I work for eight hours? After that, I only have a few times. I have my personal time. Should I sacrifice my personal time to do certain things, for example? If I, let's say I wanted to do a sharing session, then what can I do? What, what, what should I show? What, what should I talk about? 
And in fact, a lot of times that I can think about it very straightforward. I can think about it very um, bureaucratically, you know, uh, I can say A is A, B is B, but sometimes profit is not profit, loss is not loss. I can't say, oh, I do a selling situation, I can get how many followers. No, it doesn't work that way. It sometimes it's quite organic that we don't have to force it. Um, like like, like uh, Nova mentioned as well, uh, in, in Project XYZ, I sort of uh, branching out into three main things, um, project, objects, and subjects. So projects are mainly architectural, interior. Um, of course, I did, we did make some money, but not a major money, but uh, not more of the design, but rather on, you know, submission drawings, things like that. So we help with that. Um, but most of the time, we spend a lot of time in pavilions, architectural competitions. That's where we thought, you know, that's where the fun part is. Uh, we test new ideas. Sometimes, you know, because it's a competition, we just think that, you know, we can not to follow the brief. So that's how the idea comes in. And when it comes to objects, we are really we are really interested. Like for Amos, she uh, he 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 did some design or you know like explore things like exploded up the camera, and then try to understand small little things or even the little furniture in our pavilion. Also, is also part of the. It's like you can think about like a small project in a big project, like a whole package. So sometimes that's where we learn from small to big. Even though let's say from a pavilion, then from small details to the overall details like a GAD, a GA, a general arrangement drawing, then we, we sort of supervise the whole thing. Um, for subjects, I think because of COVID, uh, things are becoming more, prom uh, more, more obvious for us. Um, before that, I already, I, I, I'm, I'm happy to deliver some uh, sharing session in some university. But then after that, because of the podcast, it makes me realize to talk more and also to, to learn things more patiently from others, from other people as well. Um, it, it, because of the podcast and somehow we learn to, you know, how to take on the flight of, you know, turning XYZ into a learning platform as well. So therefore we come out with roundtable, symposium, discussion and workshops. Um, so I will, I will start off with the first project that we did in uh, 2017. I still remember this project was completed on the National Day of Malaysia. Um, yeah, it's, sorry, I think Malay, maybe National Day or Independence Day. Maybe, maybe it's Independence Day. Okay. It's August, end of August. Um, so we, 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 okay, this project is kind of like very fast. It only happens in five months. Um, from design to completion, we hired the contractor to just helping us to welding. Other than that, we did it all by our own self. We started off the project by our own self. We approached the teacher. This the the, the project itself is actually located at my alma mater, alma mater. So that's where I study my secondary school for the you know for five years there. Um, and because of the Taylor's this my 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 university this program called Community Service Initiative. So I told Amos, say, why don't we make it a real project? Because a lot of time the assignment doesn't really make it real. You just finish the drawing and renderings and you present and you're, hey, okay, thank you, bye-bye. And that's all, you know? So we come up with the idea that why don't we make it as a real project? It doesn't really matter if, you know, how our assignment goal. Uh, we just wanted to get this thing built. I mean, to get things built is a different story. It's like, if you look at the... Um, construction phase or design phase, architecture phase, or in, in RABA, there's stage zero and there's stage three, but stage four and what is technical design, technical drawing, submission, and all this. That's where the real deal comes in. Um, you know, from before that, we talk about schematic and design development. It's all kind of like a very, you know, very, uh, very new ideas. Uh, you know, it's, it's still a seed. If you hope that to make it as a fruit, then you have to, you know, complete the whole whole thing. But of course, I, I'm not saying that architecture must get everything built. It's always sometimes a book or a podcast could be a project as satisfied as an architecture project. So when it comes to this project, we started off not just ourselves. Of course, internally, we do have like seven to eight people. We come up with design. Um, but then after that, we sort of bring the co construction and also even a little bit of the design process by including the students and also teacher part of as part of the pro, uh, project as well. 
So we collect their feedback. What do they think about this place? Especially this place is next to a biological lab. It's just an empty plot of um, garden. And then we ask them, what do you think about this place? Or oh, they say, you know, it's, it's a good space for them to wait for bus. Um, but there might be potential, you know, to think about like, because there might be some breeding of mosquitoes or there are plants that is not being taken care of. So we come out with these ideas. Okay, maybe we, how can we see about the, the place? Um, if let's say the soil is not fertile enough for plants, then what can we do? And what kind of material should we, are we, so are we supposed to use concrete? Are we supposed to, you know, think about steel, like hollow section? This one is very, fairly simple, one inch by one inch, a hollow section steel. Um, so we just come up with a, a, a pavilion and we did everything by our, our own self up. And then we, we, we have to very cleverly allocate the budget because this is actually a sponsored project by both, uh, by, by both university and the school. So we have to come up with what's the budget. I think the, for the budget for this about like 5,000 ringgit Malaysia um, and completed in five months. So we actually take no, no fee from this. You know, all costs goes to construction costs. And everyone just do it happily and for in involuntary basis. And I think the fun part is always learning how to be uh, frugal, you know, to, to save money, to save time, to how to finalize design as soon as possible, try to lock it, lock, lock the design down with the school and then to come up with the timeline so that we can understand how long should we come to site. Because we were still a student, we have to come to site like almost every two weeks or maybe one week. Sometimes we have to come here. We, we, we came here like two times uh, a week, things like this. So there are actually some costs. We have to drive down from a, a, a different place to here. Even though here is my hometown, but I, I don't really come, come home so, so frequent. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think it's fun because also there are some obstacles, obstacles coming, uh, you know, came through along the way because like, for example, some teacher might not happy with it. So they say, you know, let's call for council meeting and things like this. Um, we, did a, we did a meeting with the council and say, this is going to be the project that we wanted to do. And then this is the, 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 the project that we are confident that it won't, it won't fall at least, you know, because we, this is a small project. We don't even need a structural engineer. But somehow, very luckily, we, were, we, we met a civil engineer, a structural engineer in the council meeting. So he suggests us, you know, you can do this and things. So, you know, we, we didn't really pay the engineer anything, but he's more than happy to help us as well. So therefore, you see, architecture project itself, there are so many things when we talk about money itself, we just, even though we're excluding the fee itself, construction cost itself is already taking part so many things going on. We look at here like mesh, a welding, the, the labor cost, the, 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 the material as well. Um, from the second photo, you can see the timber planks. It's actually the, from the bench. Um, it's actually a recycled timber from the laboratory uh, table. So we reclaim it and then we turn it into the bench. It's a hardwood that uh, we thought that it's going to be nice for, you know, for outdoor use as well. Um, because of the soil as well. So we thought to do this kind of a floating garden, um, suspend all the pots plants in uh, you know, in the air. So it become like a, um, like a hanging garden. And then you can see on the right-hand side, there is this um, funnel where we collect the rainwater and there's the nozzle. So you turn and then the rainwater will go to the um, flower pots. So, I mean, those are the ideas that we co definitely collected from the students. And also we sort of process and filter and then we come up with the new idea. Um, again, because all these are, uh, we did it by our own self, then we make me, make us realize more about the money as well, about how do we tie things up? Because I think most of the time, if we work in an architecture firm, we just thought that this is a construction drawing and contract drawing. Okay. Um, and then we put an annotation contractor to, to, to details or things like this, you know, and then they will figure out what kind of uh, nuts and bolts they wanted to use. What size is that? But for us, we have to be very, very clear. And then what kind of a uh, screw you want to use? Are you going to use a stainless steel or mild steel? If let's say it's mild steel, are you, how, how do you make it uh, weatherproof or things like this? And what are you using an Allen key? Are you using a, a typical screw? Are you using, what, how long is the screw? Things like this. So what's the diameter of the screw? So there comes to a point when we hands-on with the project Project, you have more knowledge about what you are doing and actually you realize okay what if something happened then you know contingency happens then you how do you come up with the plan b on site um, even though it's a small project but we often think that this 
attitude to see project is going to be the similar until when you're doing a, you know, a private residential. It's going to be the same for me, I think. Of course, the scale is more complex, but I think the attitude and how we see things is more, more or less the same. Um, of course, we, I, I am still learning, but the, because of this project makes me realize things more faster and more um, easier to digest. Like, okay, when I go to work, what are they talking about? Um, second project is actually a pavilion. Uh, it's actually an annual pavilion um, organized by Shal Shalini Gallery in uh, Malaysia. Um, PJ. So it's an annual event where we are actually the third or fourth one. I can't remember. So the first one is actually a Rotan. So I mean, the, since the first one, Amos has been joining. And then the second one is by Alina Jamil, is a Malaysian architect. The third one is Power Ideas. That's where I started to join. Um, they use the coconut fiber panels to come out with this uh, pavilion indoor is an indoor pavilion and then the fourth one we are lucky to be the designer for the fourth one and for the following years they are still planning for it um so this project also it takes about actually quite fast about three months um for the budget wise i think a below two thousand ringgit we use back the cement brick from the graduate exhibition that also that uh, we I, I I was the event leader and Amos was uh, we we were kind of doing together uh graduate exhibition with our batch of students at Kongsi KL uh, warehouse. So we reuse back this uh, cement brick because we can't use it, you know, to add to, to some anywhere else. So we just thought that okay, let's come up with the the, the pavilion as well. Um so it's actually the pavilion is actually located at a car park area and Salini Gallery is actually the building, the gallery itself is actually designed by Ken Yang. Um, it's, it's very, you know, as you know, like Ken Yang's design is very passive design, very green design. So uh, very similarly, the, the building sort of uh, finished with this grey colour palette as well. So we thought that this is quite nice to have this kind of grey colour palette to match with the you know the master <laughs> i would say ken Xiang's building or shalini's gallery is the master and then we try to complement it complement it we try not to overpower it um and and, and you can see all those uh, still uh, still members they are actually the vertical members they are actually existing um artwork by the previous art artists so we thought that we can come up with some design to incorporate the artist work and we thought that okay if let's say just doing a wall is not going to be fun we like why don't we try something else like a parametric wall and amos he himself is a very you know very experimental with softwares um so he did this in grasshopper and come up with this undulating wall i i think largely back then we were quite inspired by br ingles pavilions in serpentine uh, gallery this kind of uh, undulating walls so we treat each bricks as the module that how can we construct this kind of a curve wall, even though it's just a wall, but then how do we play with it, the permeability, and also how to be a you know, contemplative space for, you know, for people to see that. There, that's where the three benches are for, you know, you can see there. And then before that, we were planning to have like, you know, opening night that you can see it and then, you know, throw some projections and on. But, but, but in the end, it becomes part of the landscape, I would say, which we are quite happy to see. Um, after a few months, I, am, I, I still remember, after a few months, I went to visit the pavilion. I'm happy to see some plants to grow on top of the wall. Um, that's where I think, you know, when you allow the voids between the bricks to, to grow, and then I think plants, I won't say nature, I will say plants, they will find their own way to, you know, to dwell and merge with it. Um, again, we, we did everything by our own self. Um, we didn't really involve a lot of steel works, but rather on masonry works. Uh, we mixed the concrete, mixed the cement by our, our own hand. Um, I still remember there was actually one night that we have to work. Uh, we have to turn off the torchlight and then we put the binding at the nighttime, like eight o'clock or nine o'clock because to chase back the deadline. But in the end, it's a very fun project because it's like from... From the ground, from the first four, five, five or six layers, we actually started off follow the plan, and then after that we do like, okay, sh let's let's f it. Okay, we 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 will do our own design. <laughs> we, we we started off with kind of like halfway, and then we thought that okay, my, maybe we try to challenge the cantilever. Um, if you look from the side, it's actually 
the 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 bloating part is actually come come out like two or three times from the baseline. So it's actually quite quite interesting that you know how bricks can actually can deliver that far and then it goes back. So it's actually it's actually a two it's a two double war curvature. So it started off as two war and then joined up at the first uh one 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 point on the top. So that's where from the top here you can see it's only one single line, but opens up like two. Um, I mean it's 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 almost exactly like Bia Inga Serpentine Gallery where it's only but. In this case, it's only just a wall. You can't go into the open zip up space. And uh, of course, we 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 enjoy a lot of things in build stuff, but um, when it comes to build, it takes time. Um, for pavilions, it usually takes up to four or five months. Um, if lucky, then three months. But a lot of time, not just about the time, but also the money. And then to do the pavilion, we are talking about two thousand ringgit, even though it's not a big money. Um, for some for some people, but we just thought that you know back then we were still a student to fork out another two thousand is like a big deal for us, and also no time for it. Um, so we also did some competition, and from competition we try to you know expose ourselves into different scenario. From the most left hand side is actually a competition organized by Taiwan a residential uh organization organization. So we thought that, okay, how to reuse or adaptive reuse an a, a, a old building in, in Glasgow. So we thought that to, you know, to, to, carving, to carving here here and there, so create this kind of double volume space. So because of these uh, different kind of projects, it allows us to understand like given by different brief. For example, if let's say you have the chance to do different kind of project, then you can see different kind of you can learn different kind of things what is the dimension of the house and the rooms what is the minimum requirement and things so that's the first one for adaptive reuse and then we learn to you know to accommodate ourselves into different scenario different scenario in a way that you know we always thought that okay new build for example when we talk about adaptive reuse what is the structural integrity that we have to think about so the second one is actually uh uh, design a house for indigenous people in Malaysia. So they actually, uh, it's actually organized by PAM, so Malaysia Institute of Architects with EPIC. EPIC is a, is a uh, I would say it's a community builder. So they organize this uh, project for the indigenous, indigenous people. So we, 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 we joined the competition and we are lucky to, won, to, to win some uh, honorable mention and then by using the scaffolding. So uh, again, all these projects, most of the time, I just come up with a big idea. And I say, um, for example, Yixin and Vicky who did who do the projects, and I say, I think we can come up with this project. Why don't you think about it? And then we usually brainstorm in that way. I mean, of course, not all the time that I give big ideas. Sometimes Amos will give a big idea. Uh, you know, Vicky, other people will give a big idea. And then we will try to think, okay, what should we do? And what's the requirement? Is it uh, 2A1 or 1AO what's the requirement is it do, do they need plan do they need section or elevation um, do they need realistic rendering do they need line drawings uh, and then sometimes they ask for 300 dpi or, or what kind of size format and things then those are the things that I usually handle it when it comes to design then I will just help them to think about like questions like why do you do this and then how can we deliver these drawings you, you say something very utopian but how can we deliver these drawings? You talk about like flying cars and things, but you, how are you going to draw it within the given short period of time? So most of the time when I deliver all these projects together with other people, I try to think about logistics because again, it's okay if I, mean, I, I don't really mind about the design in a way because I've always believed the designer who actually I collaborate with, they can always come up with a good design. But how to make it nice, the presentation part is that's where my job is. And then I wanted to ensure that whatever you print it out is, is feasible. And also the works that you have submitted is fit with the brief. And if, if you don't want to accommodate with the brief, what can you give up? Let's say the brief asks for 1,000 square feet. And then I say, maybe we wanted, there is a chance that I wanted to do 1,002 square feet. You know, then we just submit it. It's fine because I just thought that sometimes it's I rather you to submit a, uh, you know, a, a design that you you happy with yourself rather than to submit the brief that you, 
you just simply follow and you're not sure why they wanted to constrain into 1,000 square feet and why not 2,000 or 1,005 or things like this. So for competition, that's where the testing ground comes in. Um, you know, you can always test with so many um, different methods and also ideas. Um, for the right-hand side, the blue card, uh, the, the, um, the third one and fourth one uh, are actually based in Malaysia. Those are the proposal in Malaysia, designed for multi-generational family. So again, we, we, it's, it's nice to, to try out with different kind of, for example, this kind of imaginary client, and then you try to think, what do they need? And because after I, after I studied, in, when, when I was studying in Glasgow, so I have sort of more time as well. And for me, I'm not the kind of person who actually think that getting a, you know, a very good result in my academy is always a good idea. Of course, it's always a bonus if you can get, uh, you, you can be a top student or get A or, you know, um, high distinction or things in your result. But for me, I don't think that's compulsory for me because I was so busy with doing other things else. Um, when, I, when I arrive in UK and after three months or four months, then COVID comes in. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's, that's the time it comes in. So a lot of things, you know, make me realize because during, during the COVID lockdown, I started to do podcasts as well and also start to venture into other competition because a lot of things can be done online where I have meeting with my friend online and then we come up with a proposal. Um, so the first two is actually, the first one is actually a football club at, um, uh, I can't remember, I think it's somewhere up north uh, Glasgow, New, New, New Mains, sorry, yeah, New Mains. And, and then the right hand side, this one with a lot of columns is actually Hamilton. We, we, we propose a memorial center and a garden. Um, maybe if, if I have time later, maybe I can show you the sketch of this. Um, it's something that I always wanted to, again, when it comes to competition, I, I, I do things very fast. I just wanted to do things fast so that we understand what is the limit. I don't want to take up, to, uh, take up too much time of my partners, you know, or my collaborate, collaborators or my friends or my colleagues or my teammates. I just thought that, okay, this is the fastest way. Why don't we try this? And for the third one and fourth one, third one is actually a culture center at the Azerbaijan. Um, so we thought to try rather more on the graphic. That's why I think I really like this graphic done by Ryoga, um, who, who is <laughs> uh, nice enough to help me translate the slides before that as well. So we, 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 we depends on sometimes each competition actually testing different things. For the first one, like football stadium, we try to test like, okay, what, what can we do with the realistic rendering, for example? Or what can we do with the open plan office within this football club? Um, you know, how can we try to translate sketches into renderings, for example? Then the third one, we try graphics. Can we do something not realistic rendering? We try graphical, uh, cartoonies or comic -y, something like this. And the fourth one is actually more, you know, more, more, more cartoon as well. Um, so in, in, and then, and then, sorry, the, the first one is actually a submission to uh, Bali. It's actually as a part, it's a open competition for Suara Bali festival. Um, so maybe in this case, then I can tell you how I, how we work in uh, these four projects. So the first two projects, the first one, I did it with Singh. So he's, he's, a, he's a friend that I know from Hong Kong in, in, in Glasgow. Pretty simple, just two of us. I will come up with the idea, I sketch out, I sketch and then I, I, I cut it out and then did the model and then saying, we'll just come up with the presentation board and the rendering. That's it, done. And it's very simple and come up with the write-up, everything very quick. Um, the second project, I did it with Singh and Ivanka. Um, so we... So I, I come up with the design. I just thought that very inspired by this, a lot of mini columns as the memorial uh, vertical elements as a, as a, like a, you know, it's, it's like a memorial, memorial object and also incorporate with other landscape as well. So you can see actually back there is actually a Hamilton mausoleum. So I come up with the idea and then uh, Ivanka will, you know, touch up the drawing and then Singh will come up with rendering. And that's it. I mean, that's, that's the teamwork there, how I work usually. And then usually I will just, you know, I mean, in the end, someone will need to lead the team. So I, I, I will lead the team and say, I will do the submission. I will, I will make sure that deliverable is going to be like this. And when it comes to the third and fourth one, 
deliberate. We 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 sort of split into two teams. Um, me and Ivanka one team, and Sheng and Ryoga one team. And again, how I organize the teamwork is actually straightforward in a way. I understand who do the graphic very well. For example, Ryoga can do Photoshop very good. And then I will say, Ryoga, why don't you do this? And we will come up with a design and we can brainstorm it with the design, of course. That doesn't mean that you can't cross your job scope or your task. But of course, there is always in the end, someone will need to lead a very specific task. So saying, and Ryoga come up with graphic presentation and then me and Ivanka come up with write up and um, design. So in the end, it's just simple as that. Like you, I mean, it's simple in the sense that you have to understand what is the, 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 the allo allocation and also the, the demarcation of the role or else you're gonna be you know sometimes i do design and then somehow i need to do graphic then i might be getting a little bit busier and i can't submit things like this so that's where the organization comes in very important um very happy that we submitted all the entries we didn't really you know even though we didn't make it far but i think in the end it's more of the learning how to manage project and also how to manage i won't say manage people but how to learn to work with people um, again, because of the COVID, so so we so so I come up with podcasts and then uh, interview people mainly, and of course slowly we develop into workshops and also um, other activity as well, which I will show later. So because of podcasts, uh, it allows me to know more different kind of people, and we are lucky enough, you know, uh, Hazik is here, uh, Joey, I'm not sure Joey is here. Um, so. Hazi and Joey will be the speaker for the next uh, few uh, Tua Tua Kaladi. And then we are lucky to collaborate with PAM, Malaysia Institute of Architects, to come up with three different series of um, uh, event. Or This is actually more of a lecture plus, uh, it's a more sharing session plus round table. So each event, we come up with each team. So columns and commas by Hazi, architecture and phenomenology by Joey, other ways of doing architecture by myself. So we have different kind of teams, but yet we work together, you know, how to get speakers, for example, or, or unfortunately, at some point, we have to get some sponsor. You, we have to find sponsor as well. Um, it's only maybe a few, but anyway, uh, so, so, so by organizing events, we learn a lot of things and we learn to, you know, how to allocate time for different kind of activity. For example, how long you wanted to do a, 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 a setting session from each lecture, from, from each guest. And how can we do that? Because we have three, three moderators, which is quite busy, but then we, I think it's, 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 a fast, it's the first time I realized, wow, that's really, really fun. Because each of us come from a very different perspective. Um, Joey did her concrete matter with a very open learning platform, like, you know, invite people to give a setting session. For Hazik, did a reading club and also lead the Lanai Zin as well. So we come from different kind of a learning perspective and therefore we ask different kind of questions to the guests as well. And it's interesting because these three topics usually are not very well provoked, uh, promoted in Malaysian architectural context, especially for the young architects. So uh, I would say is, you know, three events are really a good, a gr you really a great success in bringing new diversity of content and also learning opportunity for the um, architecture students and also architects. So apart from the podcast, I, I managed to organize some uh, workshop, especially this one with Nicholas. So I, I, I asked him, and he's actually my, my, a, a good friend and also a lecturer back in Malaysia. Um, so I asked him, uh, Nicholas, why don't we do something because of lockdown, we can't travel. Why don't we do an online travel? So he, he gave a sharing session about travel. He talks about his trip to Venice and then talks about how he see things and through camera as well. So the whole workshop is conducted, not just the sharing section, but a, a, a sharing session. And after that, we invited some participants, um, relatively small groups of people, maybe just six or seven people. And then we asked them to say, okay, you join in the sharing session by Nicholas. And after that, what do you learn from it? And then you step out from your house take photos and then tell us about story about your photograph. So from here, you can see we use the mirror to, you know, to, to tell us, okay, um, ja, uh, ja, uh, Qin Hui or some, you know, uh, or the participants, you know, tell us what, what, what would you like to tell us about this photograph? And, you know, is, uh, it, does this uh, image in, invoke any certain uh, memories or childhood? Tell us about it. And then through travel, how do you go to a place 
things like this. Um, that, so that's one workshop is rather educational and more um, lifestyle based. I would say a slice of life and more of the understanding of artistic side. Um, of course, I also thought that, okay, it would be great that we can run some workshop much more beneficial, much more technical. For example, like Lumia Workshop and SketchUp uh, run by Amos himself. So that's where the workshop comes in. I mean, it's free, you know, we just provide a free course for the, for the student. And also because of this uh, very, collaborative, very collaborative spirit that I really um, enjoy very much. So um, I, I'm also happy to be part of the constructing world by, uh, run by Clarissa and, and her partner to, to do this uh, event. And then uh, Hazik, my, uh, Hazik and me, myself, and also Nicholas and other friends also part of this event. So for myself, it's, it's actually an exhibition, it's an online exhibition. So my job is to interview the artists. And I think it's very fun because from this, proceed, uh, from this process, we learn how to, you know, actually artists think this way. And it's very interesting that talk about the things that we never thought of. Um, I think that's pretty much comes to almost the end of, you know, our, uh, of my sharing session. Um, I think when it comes to thinking about the whole journey, young dumb bro, it sounds very negative and also pessimistic. But I think that's the spirit that I always keep, you know, to be young dumb. Of course, not broke, but rather <laughs> more frugal in a way to be more aware of resources so that you can be more understand about how many money that you have to save and also the resources. It's not just about money, it's about, about respecting others' time. You don't want to hold out other people's time, you know, to waste others' time. Um, young, dumb, young, dumb, broke. I, I think <laughs> Norma just now play just as the right time as well, the, the, the song by Khalid. Um, so, so that's where I think that's very fun. I mean, um, it's... it's, it's, it's of course, there are a lot of things to learn in the future, which I'm very, very much uh, looking forward to. But I just thinking about for the past four years, if I'm if I were not young, dumb, and broke, that I wouldn't be, you know, be here today. But in the end, I would say I would translate these three words into both experimental and contextual in a way to be brave and to be more persistent on believing what you have. For example, sometimes I understand the certain projects, I don't even make a lot of money, but I have to pay more money or pay more time, or I have to make extra effort than I supposed to. I'm okay because the project is making me happy and I make other people happy as well. Then you have to understand what is the time that you have to be consistent and insistent on a certain principle and belief. Um, experimental in a way, go ahead and make a lot of mistakes as you can. I mean, along time, along the way, we will definitely make mistakes. But I just thought that for young people, especially, whatever whatever mistakes you wanted to make, or you you think that you want you 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 think that you can avoid, but you know, sometimes I just thought that if you can't avoid, why don't you just take this chance to learn it. Um, if let's say if worth what you have what you are learning what you wanted to learn then why not uh, contextual in a way to understand what is the right time and right thing to do because sometimes at the right time and right thing to do is perfect it sounds like you know the whole universe just aligned for you but Andy Waho says something says saying that he likes to do the wrong thing at the right time or right uh, wrong time at the right thing things like this you know they are not tally but there are a lot of things can be come out, you know, like a, like a spark where it allows you to think that life is not always smooth. You know, it sometimes might be a lot of hurdles, but you will learn things more faster and more, more colorful, I would say, along the journey throughout these hurdles and different kind of perspective. So that's pretty much about it from my side. And thank you so much for the invitation and listening. And if you, you know, I, I'm more than happy to, you know, keep in touch with you. Feel free to check out on, we can keep in touch on Instagram. So yeah, thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, Gary, for the amazing presentation of you. I'm amazed with you. You've been experiencing different role or projects in architecture, uh, craftsmen or competitions as a speaker or communicator on your uh, platform, which is, I found it pretty rare for the platform. I think you have power or 
talent to lead people and organizing uh, networking people and things i wonder how do you do that <laughs> how do you build up such ability i i must say i must say i'm actually a introvert um my i, I would say my uh, my partner um uh, my 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 you know, compared to, to some of my friends, I'm way more introvert. Um, but when it comes to, I mean, I mean that's interesting. And I mean, because I find myself introvert in meeting friends, um, you know, to talk about casual or lifestyle things. But when it comes to work, I can be very extrovert. <laughs> that's where interesting because, uh, you know, like, I mean, to other people, they can be, you know, easily say hi, you know, when they go to bar, uh, go to restaurant and easily make some new friends. But for me, no. But when mm. it comes to work, then I can social mm. quite easily. Mm. That's, I think that's where the problem is because I feel like apart from architecture, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, um, real, there was one time I was interviewing a uh, real rig and then he was mm. telling, uh, I think, I think he was asked by um, his wife, I think, was saying, can you leave architecture you know, aside for a day. He said, cannot. Then I, I realized that's quite similar to me as well. I can't really leave architecture in a, in a, in a day because that's somehow, it's not, it's not workaholic in a way, you know. It's more of like, mm. it's somehow become part of your, a part of your life. It's part of your, how you see things as well. It's your um, passion. Yeah, I mean, it's not just about passion as well. It's more of like, mm. shit, it's, it's, it's everywhere when I think about life. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you, you, you sort of uh, put things into a lot of uh, perspective as well. Um, that's where the beauty of architecture, I would say, because architecture is, it's, uh, it's, it's so broad because it's so broad in a way, I still remember there was a quote saying that engineer is knowing everything about something. Architecture is knowing about something about everything. So when you touch about everything, it's almost everything. It's, it's, it's something about everything. You, you wanted to know everything. You, you are not interested in stock marketing, but you wanted to know about it because when you do an architecture business, you wanted to know how's the market, you know? What's the housing price now? How many people actually buying a house? Is it 400,000 pound, 300,000 pound, 1 million pound, you know? So, so you somehow, you know, you, you, you have to know a lot of things. I mean, we, we always thought, for example, like Brexit, Brexit is quite political in a way, but it, it interfered the whole cycle. Uh, you know, because of Brexit, then a lot of European architects, they can't work in UK, for example. They have need, need, need to go through a spe specific protocol or procedure to work in UK, things like this, you know. So mm. it, it, it's, all, it's all related, you know, interrelated. So therefore, I realized, you know, um, you know, you have to be networking in knowing so many different kinds of people mm. as well. Um, I believe that you from architectural background, you also doing library outside. Huh? You, you know, you need to do about editing and also know how to mm. publish books as well. So it's touching here and there, then you, yeah. you somehow you will... I, I really enjoy networking, you know. I really love uh, to meet everyone here in physical. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, I've seen Reski in here. Hi, Reski. Do you want to say something to us? Hello. Hi. Hi, Risky. How are you? <laughs> hi, hi, hi. I'm fine. Really good to see hi, you. Hi, Gary. It's very, very good to see you. Hey, yeah. thank you for the wonderful and, um, what do you think, the, the sincerity uh, to share, you know. Uh, as, as you said uh, before, that we are really are uh, uh, being architects, I mean, uh, that um, we have these certain topics we don't like to talk about, I, I guess. Yeah. But we do talk about this thing a lot with our colleague, you know? So yeah. <laughs> I don't see uh, what's the problem to, to, to talk about it and not to talk about it. But yeah, yeah uh, I just want to say that I am glad to know you because of uh, this particular event. Uh, thank you to all my library as well. But I actually have uh, some question if you might, but um, you, you can, you can, we can talk in uh, other platform as well if you want. Yeah. But, oh, yeah, uh, and. And also, I, I, I need your permission, maybe, and all the friends that I need to go, uh, like, five minutes. But uh, if, I, if I could, I, I want to uh, say uh, two questions from me. If, the, if that's, uh, Is that fine, Nirma? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, amazing uh, project XYZ has been here around uh, four years, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
uh, the first question is uh, how do you measure if something is working out or not? You know, how do you measure things if something is actually working out and what not? And mm-hmm. the, the second question might be the any special method for you to organize all these uh, events. You know, you you uh, did a lot of things like Nima said, and you have um, uh, amazingly consistent uh, for these four years. So uh, any special method, uh, especially in organizing uh, the things that you uh, that you did you know any applications you you use uh, any any uh, any other organization uh, skills that you uh, can suggest to all of us who wants mm. to maybe uh, make our own platforms mm. and uh, gather our own our own friends and communicate with others mm. okay M- maybe that's all and I'm sorry I couldn't be here longer but uh, I, I will I will anticipate the answer in in my direct message. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I'm I'm looking forward to talk to you more because you are. I'm very happy to know you as well. Thanks for the questions. Uh, I'll, I'll answer now and answer more uh, later. Yes, on. yes, I yes. Can't, yes. can't wait to talk to you more. Please, thanks a lot, please, Risky. Please. Thank you, uh, thank you, Gary. See you. Thanks a lot. See you then. Um, thank maybe you, I can answer thank you so much, the. Risky. Yeah, I maybe I can answer about the how to manage. Um, first of all. It's simple. You just need to do something outside your work, because I, I, I did X, I, I, I came, I came out with X, Y, Z because I was a student and I, I didn't really see it as a full time thing. It's always a part time thing where you have to pay extra work hard, you know, to do it, and to to start off and always to do. I think competitions are really good ideas. Um, you can always look it anywhere, Arc Daily, anywhere. Almost all the competitions are there. Um, start it off with from competition as the first proposal, uh, you know, or as your first project. And then second, you just need to set up an Instagram account. Then that it. <laughs> then you technically create a new company, you know, Insta company. Um, but then when it comes to uh, doing more projects, I, I can be very, very honest with you. All the build projects, we didn't really, the first project actually, the, the first MES, uh, the Pavilion project, we didn't really get invited. We approached the client actually. So there is this book called, um, um, it's, 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 a, it's a yellow book. I, I can't remember the name now. It says about, don't look for client. More, don't, uh, it says, don't look for job. Make client look for you, things like this. It's a yellow book. I can't remember. Uh, the, uh, make a job. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't look for a job. Make a job. Uh, things like this. Yeah. So I think that's a very interesting thing because if you really want, you, 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 you find job because you, enjoy doing it it's not because you wanted to you know ask the client to give you more jobs so that i can have more money it's not because in our context it doesn't work this way we are not knocking at the door and say you know my fee is x amount i will do this thing you want to hire me as an architect or not or architecture assistant no it doesn't work this way so it's more of like you know approach the client and say okay see i have a project that i'm interested to do at your place um and then maybe we can do something else together. I mean, for the money part, we'll figure out later on. And then if you're happy with it, then why don't we proceed? It's going to take some step by step to, you know, to get the project. And even though sometimes you don't get the money, it's fine. Because if you're doing happily for it, then why not? Because a lot of times, sometimes people might say, oh, do it for the portfolio is stupid, stupid marketing. But I, again, like Ogiwi say, there's no mar- there's no marketing, it's bad marketing, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's you just do it. And then sometimes for me, how do I manage people as long as everyone is happy? Um, throughout my experience working with people on competitions, when the only time I give up one or two projects is one, I realize that I really cannot do it. Um, I at first my first competition is actually I did it in my foundation year. I don't know how to use uh AutoCAD. I asked my friend. You want to do it? He said, yes, why not? He used Photoshop one line by one line to draw the, the floor plan. We realized it's not the way to do it. Then we just give up. That's the first thing when I realized sometimes you just need to give up and it's fine to give up. Um, the second time, the second reason usually I would just give up the competition is when everyone really busy and can't do it. If you're not happy to do it, let go. It's fine. Really nothing to, you know, to blame about and also give, give up our guilty about it. There are so many things that we can try out in the future. So it's okay. But for me, when I, how I manage, how I work with people is I will try to understand what are they good at. 
for example, Ivanka, for example, Ivanka is good at writing. Then I will get her, you know, to help us to come up with a narrative or uh, synopsis of the project. Ryoga is good at graphic, then come up with a graphic, you know, 2D, Photoshop, post-production. Um, for saying it's good at 3D, then let's do a, uh, you know, to do the rendering. You know, for me, then I will just come up with a big idea. I will just arrange like, okay, why don't we, on Sunday, we have a meeting and then we will do this, do this. We come up with the agenda. That's the way. So that's that's pretty much the way how I organize it. Um, I If you don't mind, maybe I can show a very, very quick um, image that I did for the Hamilton Pavilion. So see, this is a very sketch, very, very, very draft sketch um, I did for the Hamilton. It's almost similar to the rendering that I did for, that we did for the Hamilton project. Um, I would say because um, I spent a year working in ZLG, it's a small firm in Malaysia, and I learned how to sketch fast as well. So that's where I, you know, I come up with the idea that, okay, that's where the Hamilton is. I wanted to do a lot of columns. I want the tree is here. I want the people sitting over here and, and things, you know. So that's the, that's the way for me to come up with the proposal. And then that, and then there comes the idea like this, you know. So it's, it's always from the sketch to come up with the idea that you know how to negotiate with how or, or work with your friends or colleagues, yeah. So that's I would say that's the that's a that's a way for me to do it, yeah. Great, yeah. Um, I would like to invite Hazik to talk to here. Hazik, hi Hazik. Hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> hi, Gary. Hi, Nirma. Uh, I don't know if it's still there. Can meet you. Yeah, nice to see you. <laughs> um, thanks, Gary, for the talk. I mean, well done. I, I don't think if, uh, if, if someone just heard you for the first time in this talk, I don't think they would have guessed that you're an introvert at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that was a good talk. I mean, I think it's interesting because I guess I've seen a part of your journey uh, you know, and kind of alongside, um, maybe to throw a curveball, I kind of want to ask, um, now that you're here, what's the, uh, maybe it's a bit too early to ask, but I'll ask mm. it anyway. Mm. Now that you're here, what's the next step? And where, what, what's your dream uh, project or dream, you know, uh, thing to do? Uh that's a that's a, 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 a I mean when it comes to a, a little bit of personal level we I, he asked me the same question as well <laughs> last week I think um I I would say I wish to see myself of course settle down in UK for the you know for the this few two years first and then I'll pursue for architecture for you know pursue for to to be an architect and also more of the project architect to be more specific actually um. And also because when it comes to project architect, that's where I'm more sensitive with numbers and also more sensitive with fee, with, uh, you know, the business side. That's where I realized when it comes to doing project, it's not just about, you know, dealing with client, but internally, you know, externally is client, internally is the office. You, I mean, in both, I'm still very interested, but, but project architect is sort of the gap between there. Because I recently I realized how important it is because as a project architect, if let's say you are part of the manager, you have to understand invoicing as well. Like you wanted to send out your fee. If let's say the, for, the, for, the, for, for the next six months, I'm not getting any new project, what should I do? If let's say the client didn't pay me money, what should I do? You know? So that's where the project architect, when you are inside the project, then you realize how, how efficient you should be in the position where, okay, in this meeting, I wanted to talk about bathroom and kitchen. That's it. I don't want to talk more than that because you are the, the client might dragging more than what I want. So that's where I start to think internally where, you know, I don't want to waste so much time on talking about other nonsense. If you pay me, that's fine, you know. But if, <laughs> but if you're dragging my time, then that's where I start to realize, shit, you know, I have other projects to run as well. Don't, you know, we have to be more fair because I don't want to work overtime as well. You know, that's where the, 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 the time management is very important. Um, but at the same time, because I always thought that, you know, um, one person usually do two jobs in a way. Um, one is full-time, one is part-time. The part-time usually is due for fun. For example, like Lanai or XYZ. I always see it as fun projects. Um, for those uh, fun things, I, you know, for the for the next five years, I, I project a business plan for, you know, as five years. 
I hope that XYZ can do more installation and also pavilions. Um, I don't foresee, you know, to, to be a new build big house or things, or at least an interior. That's where I am for. Um, that's what I plan for in the five years. Um, whether am I aiming to go back to Malaysia? That's actually quite a question, actually, um, because I'm quite new to UK context. I'm very comfortable in UK context for now. And I really hope that, oh, it will be great that this will be the place I can stay for the next 20 years or 30 years, but it's too early to say now. Um, but yeah, that's, that's actually what I thought to do it and the focus now, you know, in my full-time career first. And then XYZ, I hope uh, soon enough, I will come back with more podcasts and events. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Hansi. I think it's, I'm, I'm looking forward to see you very soon also. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Nira. Hi, thank you so much, Hansi. Um, I would like to invite Yvonne to talk. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Yvonne. Because he wants to talk. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Yvonne. Hey, hello. <laughs> hi, nice hello. to meet you. <laughs> yeah, hi, nice to meet you. So, yeah, Gary. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I just uh, chip in a little bit. Um, Lana is actually run by a few people. Uh, Hazik, mm -hmm. me, myself, Amos, mm -hmm. Yvonne also part of the team. So, we uh -huh. actually work on the Lana together. <laughs> oh. So, the, we, we, yeah, we, we just I'm released the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, good to see you, Yvonne. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, I think I didn't know like this side of Gary actually, so I also only like worked with Gary online and we never really met in real life, so <laughs> everything oh, wow. happened online, yeah. Yeah. And so I'm glad that I came to this sharing today, so I know more about Gary today. <laughs> 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 so maybe I'll just show like a, a very... I don't know, like emotional question, I guess. Yeah. Like, do you ever feel like, I don't know, when, when you feel down, how do you like pick up yourself? So I'm sure that you feel down at certain points of your life. And then how do you like, you know, quickly pick up and then, you know, move on with life? Because I think a lot of architects feel down like a lot of times in, in their career. Yeah. So how do you like face that? Um, I think, I think, it depends if let's say if if you are talking about if you're asking about whether if I feel down when I was working as an employee. Um as an XYZ thing, I don't really feel down because I'm the, you know, I mean, I mean technically to say I'm the I'm the leader, I'm the co-founder who actually has the responsibility to run the project, the the, the collective where I am technically quote unquote uh, uh, employer. So I don't take this seriously because again, Project XYZ doesn't really make a money yet. So therefore, I, there's no much worry or feel down about it. Whether, you know, I miss one podcast a month, it's okay. I mean, I know that I can't do it, then that's fine. But then if let's say you're asking feel down when I was working as an employee, like in an architecture firm, there are three principles, I believe, okay? So it's a, it's a chair with three legs, okay? So if you're working, you have colleagues, uh, colleagues, your boss, and your work. So work in, in a sense like project. For example, back then when I was working a private residential, I really liked that project. Okay, that's I love it. I love my job. But the, the boss is shitty. Then, you know, it's a chair with losing one leg. But, um, and then a good colleague, meaning to say you're working with the nice people, Okay, maybe it's not to say boss lah. Okay, let's say let's say pay for example, uh, a colleague which is your boss, including your boss as well. You you enjoy working with him, or with her, with them, and a good pay and also good job. So in my in my principle, if let's say we, when you are working as an employee, a chair with just one leg, then is there's there's a danger, where I start to realize I don't have a good pay, I don't have a good colleague, I. I enjoy the project, but it doesn't mean anything for me because it's not unstable. It's, it's, it's not stable for me. For me, I always thought that I must at least have a good project, for example, or good colleague. The good pay is fine. If let's say I can sacrifice that, I will sacrifice it. But when I feel down, that's where it comes in the tool where it comes to cover it back, where I think it's okay. If let's say I can't get a good pay, but I'm working happily with my colleague uh, or I'm working on the projects that I'm proud of. 
that's where I feel, you know, my compensation to cover my down feeling, I would say. But, but, but when it comes to career, which to my surprise, I don't feel down a lot in my career. But I feel down more outside the career. <laughs> <laughs> that's where a lot of emotions comes in my personal life comes in i'm very emotional people i i i, I get in, interfered by other things self family friends more than the job or, or career when it comes to career i can be very stable i can i can i can cry about it it's okay i will i'll, I'll just wipe the tear and then next second i will just focus on the autocad <laughs> I, I, I but when it comes to career it's fine i really can do work that's that's the that's the strength but when it comes to you know things outside the career that's i need i'm still learning how to handle emotions um of course emotion handling this part is also related to how you talk to people as well um you know how to talk to everyone here for example it's not just about job but also how to network how to social how to you know greetings how to greet with other people, how to say hello, how to say how are you. Um, that's where I'm still learning, I would say. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, I think when, if, if ever I feel down, I will just take a walk. A um, few days, a few, I think since I got here in UK, you know, walking is really helpful. Um, you just listen to a song and then just walk in the park. Especially in, in UK, there are a lot of parks. Um, in Malaysia, you hardly find a park. <laughs> so just take a walk and I really like this uh, book it's called Silence by a uh, Norwegian uh, Norwegian ad adventurer so he traveled up North Pole and South Pole before and then he wrote a book called Silence and also he wrote a book called um, Walking or something yeah that's a very nice book that you know it's quite you know very zen like uh, you know silence and nothing is you know forever a permanence things like this yeah so that's always for me is uh, uh, solution uh. keep kick <laughs> like like Johnny Johnny Walker keep on walking <laughs> yeah I agree that like walking in the UK really helps because yeah. that's what I did also back then in, in UK like alone walking around in the city is actually quite healing in a sense yeah. but I think I think in, in like Southeast Asian countries it's a bit hard uh. so we have to find yeah. other ways to like you know de-stress in Southeast Asia but yeah. yeah, thanks for your sharing, Gary. <laughs> thanks a lot, Yvonne. Good to see you here. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you so much, Yvonne. Uh, I would like to uh, continuing the questions Yvonne asked before uh, about the if you feel down. Uh, I wonder if you ever feel like you don't know what to do about Project XYZ or, you know, you found it unmotivational how do you handle with it um when, when it comes to xyz there are always questions for me as the co-founder and also to my partner Amos. also we 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 once in a while we need to question what we're supposed to do um if let's say in the end we treat instagram as our shop lot or office how can we stay active and telling everyone that we are still alive in a way? Um, that's very important in a way that to tell everyone we are still active, we are still eager to learn and also share knowledge. Um, so consistently, we still, you know, if, if you check out the Instagram, like, you know, like our office. So if you go in, you feel like, okay, you check out our works oh, and also nice. looking, at, looking at our works and also what have we what have you done in the past few weeks? Sorry, or maybe for the past one or two months. Um, that, therefore, I come up with the idea of podcast because podcast always allows me to keep on constantly updating and also knowing what to do. Giving a purpose to XYZ in a way, hi Gary, do something about this. Hi Gary, do a podcast. Hi Gary, do a book review or things like this. So for me, that's what I thought. Um, for the next step, I would say, okay, actually Hazik write a, asked a very interesting question as well because um, Hazik and I are actually writing a book. So we are still doing, we are working on it. Um, so hopefully that could be a book for XYZ as well. Um, it's more personal for me actually. Um, so because, because of myself, can't do a lot of competition because I am now you know, fully employed by, by someone and then I don't have really a lot of time to to do other competition as well compared to back then when I was a student I can do a lot of things but now 
the responsibility is way is um, heavier. So for me, I think to make things move forward is to do constantly do, um, like I said, the subjects, um, discussion, workshops, sharing session with you, with you guys, meeting new people is always nice, you know, for me to constantly keep on, you know, going. And and I, I sometimes feel bad because along, along the way, I have spoken, I have spoken to other people as well. They have asked me saying that, you know, you should keep on doing it and keep on doing podcasts. And I say, okay, I'll sure I will keep on doing it. And it, 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 you know, those those are the motivations for me to keep on doing um XYZ in not just about projects, but rather also um podcasts. Or recently I I, I love read books. Um I, I believe that me and Hazi and Yvonne sometimes talks about books as well. Um so Every day, if let's say you every month, let's say you can finish one book, that means you can come up with the new content in a way. Um, for XYZ, it's kind of like similar. We are always looking for content. Yeah. So that's that's what I would say, you know, how to push yourself to keep on see. You have to see your own initiative as a business. How to push, keep on pushing, how to create more content, how to not, it's not about follower actually. It's more of like how to ensure that you are keep constantly updating with other people. Like, you know, what happened to the latest politics? Do you have anything to say? Or, or recently, uh, Foster and Partner Tulip building got rejected by the government. What, what do you think? You know, you know, it's like news. It's like journalism. You've got keep on uh, updating. Yeah. Uh, I want to know how did you scheduling the event on Project XYZ or, or how do you guys come up with the idea and you think that the topic is important to bring up? Sorry, sorry, sorry? Uh, I want to know how did you scheduling the event on Project XYZ uh. and how do you guys come up with the idea and you guys think that the topic is important to bring? Yeah. Uh, um. So since COVID, we because the podcast is started off as a once a month thing, so we invited different people once a month. Um, we started off as a student, and then usually if I'm doing this month, I'm sorry, if I'm doing next month as my first episode, but at the same time, I'm inviting the, the, the second month as well. So I got the information. For example, I wanted to invite a student, say, I'm interested to interview about your final year project. Can you send me over? And then I will have a read and then I will come up with questions. So, so actually when I'm interviewing someone in March, I'm already start preparing on January in a way. So, so it consistently every, every month I have something to do. Um, so, you know, January, I'm doing March. February, I'm doing April. March, I'm doing May, things like this. So, that's for the podcast, but I have stopped for a while because I, you know, I'm moving from Glasgow here and there and lo lots of things happen in personal, personal matter, lots of things, um, which, which is totally surreal in a way. Um, but, but I wish to continue when, you know, when I settle down a few things um, because, um, you know, these two months, will, this coming two months will be a lot of things going on as well because of Christmas as well and then it will be New Year. Um, Potentially, I'll be back to Malaysia for a short break. And then maybe after that, I'll try to start off the engine again to do um, to do all these things again. Um, yeah, so so far, I don't have a really far vision on the schedule saying that on oh, next year, I wanted to write a book or things. Um, not really a fixated schedule yet, but we all, I always have a plan in mind. Yeah, so, so I mean... But, 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 but now, because I'm now working in an architecture firm also as a content manager, so therefore, uh, my focus has always been always for the office in a way like one, one week, they have to come up with three posts, for example. What three posts? And then I have to think about um, for the office. Uh, for XYZ, not really. I think it's quite organic and quite irregular. It's, it's okay, I think. Yeah. All right. Uh, we move on to the next question. Hanifa will ask a question. Hi. Hi. Um, I have several questions which I think you've already uh, answered. Yeah. Uh, in the previous, in the, from the previous uh, people who asked. Uh, first is about the. Uh, 
does followers matters to you? Uh, I think this this are related to the how you would cast your speakers. Like mm -hmm. in Omah Library, we have Kak Rich, Kak Ariel Rich, who mm. who is a very uh, experienced and has mm. also had a lot of networking. So he always uh, has the contact to mm. the contact to uh, yeah to yeah 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 mm. yeah anyway uh so how it, how does it work in in project xyz like how did you get these people to speak in your mm. platform and mm. what makes them interested to to fill in like uh are they attracted to your main topic or yeah. your followers or i don't know like yeah. what matters to you and yeah. also the second the second question is you started as a student in yeah. project xyz and it was in malaysia right and now you are in london it clearly they clearly have different contexts and yeah does that affect the content in project xyz yeah i think that's my question right um thanks thanks for the questions um i think those are really interesting questions um because it's some, somehow uh, resonate quite well to to what i think about the future plan as well um mm -hmm. how i get the guess um first of all if you look at the the the, the list right it's for the first five to ten they are mostly students so it started off i won't say i won't say the the the, the student guests are my guinea pigs or the white mouse for me to test out this podcast you know um because it's for me to 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 learn how to you know to to invite people and, and also to make people to feel like they invited and then what they wanted to share about as well and um, for them, it's also the first time experience to, you know, their voices to be recorded on the Spotify as well. And then to be recorded and to be published, that's another, you know, level where we have to conquer ourselves where as a student, you might not be able to do that. So, so for guests, I always start off as a student because, um, you, you, okay, you might say <laughs> students are guinea pig or white mouse in a way, but then I don't think so because they have their own value as well. Um, but then because of how you train yourself to, to, to question more, you have your confidence to approach to someone more prominent. Um, I would say my, my, my first gate is actually to invite uh, Lok. We Lok Kwang is actually a Malaysian architect who did a timber architecture a lot. Um, so that's my first gate where I realized that's the milestone where I have to keep on trying a new steps. Um, of course, the network is also comes to a point, uh, comes to a play where um, we managed to invite uh, Dr. Elena Jamil because um, Amos were, were a inter was an intern in um, Elena office. Uh, I managed to invite her Huat because I used to work in ZLG. You know, I know I know Sue Sue and uh, Huat. And somehow I know other people like Sufian, you know, Hazi, Yvonne, and all is all through Discord. So I think in the end, it sorry, if 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 you once you start off with one podcast, people will start to realize oh, you are doing podcasts, but they are most of the time they don't really, you know, reject the invitation unless they are really busy. Um, but for now, I wish to, you know, think about other ways to question and also do interviews. Um I think network is like a ripple. It's a water ripple. Once you touch one and then it will continue connect more and more and more. Um, and then I, I'm glad that some actually like in podcast guests actually, you know, recommend me to invite other guests as well. So sometimes I don't have to go and invite, you know, sometimes I just got suggested, you know, it's like, it's like client, you know, it's like once you do one project for one client, then the client, the client think you are good, then they will introduce another client to you. So that's how it works for the podcast guests. Um, of course, uh, constant, constant, uh, consistently have to push more and more. 
uh, after I've done Malaysia and then I thought, okay, I know someone interesting called Yan. And then I just saw on, just, just so happened that I go to Instagram and then I say, Yan, would you like to join a event? Same goes to Rurik actually. Um, to my surprise, Rurik really respond to me very, very fast and friendly. He said, wow, sure, why not? And then he joined the PAM. Um, then after that, I invite him over for the podcast. So that's so happened that I managed to meet you guys as well. So it's, it's, it's really just, uh, you know, once you know one people and then you start to connect and connect and connect. Um, I do have a few um, questions, questionnaires and also guests in my plan, but uh, because uh, really these few weeks, these few months kind of packed up, so I can't really, you know, deliver a few podcasts. So I might do it maybe next year. So those are the people that, you know, from being active in education, especially, you know, you know, lecturer, and then you attend some crit, you know, some lecturer's friend, and then you, you talk to them, and then that's how you make friends. Um, yeah. Sorry, I forgot about your second questions. Uh, about you moving to London, and how oh. does that change the context or the content of Project XYZ? Yeah. Um, before that, I actually quite persistent on saying that I must come back to Malaysia to develop XYZ as my thing. But then I realized a lot of things actually can be done online. So there's no point for me to, you know, come to come back to Malaysia. Um, the reason why I decided to stay in UK because I just thought, you know, why not, you know, stay and then to understand more things differently and to experience and see how people working here. Um, so that's where I realized... Um, that's where I realized I need to work here and then it's totally fine to work XYZ online um, because so far we don't have a lot of on-site project. Um, we didn't really have any. So everything could be done online. So that's really fine. Um, and the only difference is only time zone. So for mm -hmm. example, like it's a seven or eight hours difference, but it's not really a matter to me to talk to you know other people in Malaysia. So that's fine, yeah. So it's not really a big deal, actually. In, in fact, it an, adds on so many value on how I see XYZ. Because how mm. people working in London or UK, they and then I try to imply that, implant into um, what I'm doing online, Malaysian-based online, yeah. Wow. Uh, I have additional questions. So, uh, like, I mean, if I work in Indonesia, maybe I would talk about... Uh, culture and architecture but then if yeah. I move to like Singapore maybe I will, will talk more about technology or yeah something like that and yeah. do you see any difference in Malaysia and, and UK and does your moving to London change that change those yeah. issues that you want to talk in Project XYZ yeah yeah I mean um because London is such a such an ambiguous city, I would say. It's a city that there's no identity. In a way, it's good that everyone can be Londoners in a way. So because of that, there are so many events going on as well. There are events, art events especially, and also architecture events that makes me realize anyone can join. So... That's also part of the motivation where I wish to organize architecture events if I can in Malaysia as well because it, it makes things so so open and you know you can always join whatever you are and whoever you are. Um and 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 more particularly of network and also learning not just about what they did, but more of how they did it. Rather, you, you know, it's more like how they organize an event and how they draw um, the visitors to a certain event and also what kind of marketing strategy they use, Instagram, and then how's the graphic, how they write their things. Um, so that's why I learned, especially in London. And of course, when, when there is a big group of you know, customer or visitors, there is a target group who actually will visit the, the gallery or uh, your event, then you start to realize what kind of temp, what kind of palette they are actually taking? Are they more prefer to a certain genre of uh, architecture or event? You know, or is it more on film? Is it more on contemporary art? Or is it more on architecture? Is it more on um, open house or open open visit or things like this? Then you can see what is the trend that is going on. Um, where in Malaysia is so rare. We, or for example, like open house in London. 
Open house in London is means like you can go to someone's house and then the architect will bring you to have a look at the house. So it's called open house. I, I think it's, uh, it's called open city. The organizer is called open city. Then there's part of the program is called open house. So you can go to different kinds of building. It's not just about, you know, sometimes architects is fine. They don't, they don't have to be here. Then they don't, don't have to be in the building, but they are guided tour, you know. In Malaysia, I don't think so. It's only a few, very rare, where, you know, open house is such a big thing, where it's actually very useful, you know, because general public will join in. And those people who don't study architecture will join in. And in the end, once they visit a, a house that designed by yourself, then they will think, oh, this architect is good. Why don't I hire you as my architect for my, you know, my house or things like that. So it's a event become a networking platform. So that's where I realized it's very important to have all these events, non-architectural events to push architecture forward. Yeah. Okay, thank you for your answers and also okay. your answers, answers for, for the first questions. questions. Really, really you know, calming. calming. It's, it's very calming to know that, that. as really long as you keep doing it, it will resolve by itself. itself. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anifa, for the question. Um, move on to the next question. We have a question from Nielsen Huang. Uh, I'll help to read it. Architecture is a very fast world. We can get lost easily in it. My question is, how do we know that we are on the right track? Mm, um, I mean, it depends. Like, if if you're asking, like, what types of is I I interpret it as like, um, I uh, is is a question like, what type of architect that we wanted to be, kind of thing, you know. Uh, but regardless of architects or not, knowing that whether we are on the right track is knowing that you are very comfortable to doing it. Um, for me, I realize when I'm doing something that I like or I know that this is on the right track is when I think about it no matter where I am. And I think about it in a very happy way. I think about it like even though I sleep before I sleep. For example, there is a project that I'm really excited I think about it, it's fine. I can think about it not being, I mean, being, being me stressed about a lot of things. I'm thinking about as a potential and very optimistic about the project. Then you know that, you know, you are actually on the right track. And from that on, you realize you are doing the most happy job ever you wanted to do, you know. So that at that moment, you feel like, ah, oh, I'm so happy and confident and comfortable to do this project. Rather than, you know, ah, oh, shit, I don't want to see this project tomorrow morning, you know, things like this. I mean, at some point, of course, they, I mean, life couldn't be always uh, happy. So there, there is always some point that you wanted to let go a little bit and then to understand what, what you can do to compensate what, you, what you're supposed to do, what you need to do and what you want to do and are, are two different things. It's, it's always a dream that you wanted to do something and you need and collides with what you need to do. Um, so if you're happy with it, for me, sometimes I just think about I, I'm confident that I can finish this thing within a certain period of time. Then I know that I'm on track and I'm confident and I'm comfortable to do that. I'm not feeling stressed and feel stressful about this. Then I know that that's the, that's the thing that I realized, oh shit, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the project. I'm, I'm on the right track. Um, not just about project based, but also more of the purpose, like in general, your lifestyle, um, because of, you know, since I left, since I moved out from Glasgow to other places, for example, like London, I realized that a lot of things actually could, could be not on right track, actually. But when things are not on right track, it's actually a challenge for you to learn things more. Um, because life is just, when, when life gives you lemon, you just need to make it a lemonade. <laughs> you know? don't, don't have to sour about it. <laughs> so, so if you cannot, if you on the right track, you right, you know the right view, you will be happy about. It. If you're not, then think about how to make it happy. And for me, there are two ways to be happy. One is do things that make you more happy. For example, if you're hungry, then buy food. That's it. Or if you are, if you wanted to get happy, and another way is not to make you feel unhappy. For example, you know, to to think about other something else, not to make you feel hungry or things like this. So there are two ways to do it. So I always believe there's always plan B, you know, you, 
if you cannot get get back on track, then maybe you want to change another track. Um, things like this, yeah. Great. Uh, I would like to invite Elizabeth Katrin to talk in here. Hi, Elizabeth. Uh, you are still in a mute. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hi, Elizabeth. <laughs> Hi, thank you for your sharing. Thank you. And thank you, Karel Rich, for inviting me to this very interesting talk. Although I just can join the very last part of the presentation, but I joined the whole Q&A session. And then uh, I'm very interested in seeing how Gary is very passionate in doing all of these architectural things, right? And then uh, uh, my question is how to set the balance between the things that is making money and the things yeah. that is not making money. Yeah, it's very realistic. Yeah, uh, yes, questions, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, and then do you have any suggestion for anyone who wants to start a business uh, yeah. in architecture? Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Elizabeth. I think that's the question that I'm afraid <laughs> that I couldn't answer, but I, I get a little hint of it, you know, because now I'm working from now what I'm doing now and also the context and also background environment that I'm working now. Um, first of all, I, I think there is this book that's very interesting that I was talking to Rurik as well. This book called um, The Art of War <laughs> by Sun, Sun, Sun Tzu. It's an art of mm -hmm. war. Uh, uh, it's, 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 of course, it's a, quite a, you know, you can interpret it into any way. If you wanted to put it into business context, it's, it's fine. Um, um, I do agree because I, you know, back then when I was a student, how I do my project, uh, most of the competition, they are free. They, they, you know, they don't require any registration fee. That's why I strongly encourage all the students, if you have time, go ahead with the competition. Competition is not just about for you to come up with your own portfolio and works. It also allows your exposure. That's where it's very important. Um, I, I, I do agree because when, back then when I was a student, I don't have money. I, 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 my only income is because of living costs, uh, um, living fee from my you know, for my family. So what I would do is actually save the money and do something else. For example, like one month, I can save up like 200 bucks. And then, then I spare with other people. Then, then, then we have the money to do the project. But sometimes saving money is a kind of making money, if you think about that way. Um, because we are young, we are not like architects where we can, you know, we are not legal architects where we can sign off any drawings and say, oh, I want to charge you any money. Um, that's where I realized making money part is more of saving money. Because for me, not spending money is actually making money. You, 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 I, I hope you get this theory in a way. When I'm doing my project, I try my best to not spending money, meaning to say that's where I'm earning money. Because if I need to pay money to build a pavilion. I need to spend money where I haven't made any money to compensate the money that I spent. That's where the problem is. And then to, 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 to save money or to use someone money to cover my construction costs is actually making money. Getting sponsored is main, mainly one. And also to think about how to save costs. Like, are you able to drill the thing, drilling or cutting by your own? Then it's save money. So by saving money is actually earning money in a way for me. So it's like zero is, is money. Um, it's, 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 um, zero is neutral. Negative one is losing money, right? You, you wanted to buy a pen, then you, you have to give up money. But to make money is I can make a pen and I sell someone and I get one pound for that pen. I'm making money. But zero for me is I'm asking someone to buy the pen for me. So I get the mm. pen without spending money. Or I change my perception or my expectation where I don't need this pen at all. I have a pencil, that's fine. I, I can write a thing with pencil that I, and I don't need a, getting a new pen. So money is like how I see like this. If you wanted to earn more than one, then you, you, know, you work harder and then you go and buy the pen. So that's where you start to think about how to get client and all. That's another level where I couldn't answer now um, because I haven't got a job yet. I mean, I haven't really got a client yet. But from what I experienced is to, in order to get client, the networking is very important, especially in architecture industry. Um, 
yeah, you think about like uh, there is this book called Four Walls and the Roof by uh, this guy who worked in the o, uh, o, OMA, um, Ray, Ray, Rene, Rene de Graaf. And then he was talking about actually architecture is a right a capitalist industry in a way. It's a very money-driven thing. And money is invisible. And then the architecture is the is a vehicle to drive the money. Or same like um, Shigo, uh, Shigeru Ban saying, I mean, money and status are invisible. Architecture is visible. That's where they can show off their status and money and wealth. So in the end, when it comes to money, it's, it's quite really related to capitalist idea where, you know, talks about client and networking. So in order to get that, get that client, you have to keep on knowing more people and then to advertise yourself, um, which very strange in architecture school, we don't talk about it. Because in architecture school, we only talk about, you know, what you wanted to design, but didn't say how you wanted to share your design. So I can only give, I can only share the advice in a way to network and to expose yourself. No one, no one will approach to you when you are unknown. That's my only, that's what I know. Because, because you have done something, then the client will know that, oh, Elizabeth, you are good at something. Let's, I, I wanted to invite you to do something. So that's the value. The, 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 the value chain is there. You have to understand the value. In a way, what is value like? If you hire me, but my fee is just right to cover my cost. Um, you know, my cost to run a company is 500 ringgit, for example. And the, let's say, you know, the, the, the client only pay me 500. It, I'm, I'm not making money. I'm not losing money. But the value is I get to make new projects as a portfolio, uh, things like this. But it really depends up to you, like whether do you think the project is it worth doing or not, you know. So in the end, the network first, you you get you get the fishing net everywhere, and then you capture how many you want and then how many you need and how many you can do. Um, so that's what I can think about, you know, finance. Um, that's where I saying that you know the full time Monday to Friday is where my job. That's where my money comes in. <laughs> Saturday and Sunday, I'm doing the things that you know. Not making money, but sometimes taking out my money as well. <laughs> sometimes it's like taking out my money to network and to have coffee and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's actually <laughs> taking out my money, but it's fine because you have to, you know, that's where the finance part, you know, in architecture school. I'm curious why we are not taught about this. You know, business is actually quite, quite, a, quite, a, quite a vast thing, you know. But in the end, what we learn about architecture is actually the weapon in a way, I think. It's the content. Is making who you are, what you are good at. Are you good at designing residential? Are you good at designing commercial? Are you designing a gallery, a museum? There must be a certain uh, uh, strength that you have. It's like a SWOT, you know, SWOT SWOT analysis of yourself. And then you know what you're good at. And then you know that what kind of client you look for. Uh, you know, if you wanted to do a private residential, I don't think you wanted to go to the, the, the government body and say, I want to design a a house, give me a project, a house, they, they, unlikely, you know, they will only give you government project, things like this. So you have to understand what is the niche and also the target user that you wanted to target. That's, it's quite business. Uh. I, I would say, uh, read, read business book rather than read architecture book more. <laughs> so a uh, business book actually taught me all this. Um, there's this book I really like, it's called Lean Startup. Um, I'll, I'll share the in the text that I, I really like that book. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot for the question. Thanks for the sharing as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, think about it. It's really business in a way. Business is not yeah. just about money making. It's also talking to people as well. It's a kind of a flow. We 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 don't. I don't talk to you because I want your money. You know, I I want to make friends. You know, I wanted to know you more, and then I thought that you are interesting. You know, you you are all interesting. Uh, you know, are interesting to know. Then that's that's how the world is quite collaborative in a way. Yeah. Elizabeth, do you have any other questions? No, thank you. Thank you very okay. much. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you very so interesting. Much, yeah. Uh, I would like to invite Bu Inda with the Stuti. Bu Inda, hello. Are you there? Okay, I think she's not ready. Right. I will ask. 
the location then from the chat chat this chat room. It's from Kevin. I am still want to know about what to presenting the art firm. I think he mean is platform, yeah. yeah. Okay, like right. a platform so we can get a project client. How did you present your platform and get your first client? Um um so so maybe I can speak from my own personal experience from the both um, pavilion that I did. Um like like I said, the first one actually because it's my secondary school, um secondary school where I study, um I approached to the school without without any much you know asking for money and all much more on sponsor side. So I approached the the the, the approach to the client in a way. Um, so I, I approached to the client actually more of I approached the client and started off. Um, the second one is actually because we did a few pavilions, then the client thought that to invite us. So um, we didn't really, I, I, I can be very honest with you, our first client is actually we, we get it by our, our own self. We ask the client rather than the client ask us. So that's the attitude where you might want to try next time in a way like, a lot of time you don't have to find a job you sometimes you just need to make a job and then really need to think about like how can you make things more sustainable like longevity wise how to make things move forward um to get more client um in the end it's also the portfolio as well if you're able to do something then people will turn to think like oh okay you're experienced in doing this then we will keep on inviting you to do more things yeah um I think when it comes to marketing, I would say is Instagram is quite useful, and then also need to see, need to see, uh, what 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 kind of uh target you wanted to go for. If you wanted to go for big projects like skyscrapers, you know that where you are working is actually more, more of big firms. They are not small firms, um. So that's those are the things that you know you wanted to try to allocate and also lock down what kind of uh, direction you wanted to do if you wanted to do housing then you go for housing if you want to go museum you go for museum you know you want to go for any quite specialist one i mean of course there are a lot of firms that you know you, you it's a medium size usually they do a lot of things so you might give it a try to depends on whether their philosophy match your philosophy or not yeah but I know, I'm not sure if I answer your question, but when it comes to marketing-wise, I think it's really need constantly updating the social media um, to make sure that people knowing what you are doing and also what you are good at. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Kevin. <laughs> okay. Do you have uh, another question, I, Kevin? Uh, I think uh, it... I think about uh for to uh presenting about uh, some for for instance uh the our portfolio it it is could be to make to make a the first ever client to presenting uh our uh our works by portfolio is it could mm. be sorry sorry what do you mean uh I mean uh. I think uh from I think if we can pre uh is it possible if we can uh presenting our uh, if we can I mean is it possible to get the first ever uh client mm. if we can show our works from the uh portfolio right I mean, I mean, I mean, of course, you, you, if you don't have a client, then you can always start off with something else like competition, for example, as your portfolio. Um, as I know, as I know, you're, you're always the first project, usually, if you know, usually you might listen, you might, you might hear from some architects saying their first project, it might be from their family or their friends. So yeah. there is a network yeah. there that it's, it's, it's always impossible that someone will bump into you unless you've done something. For example, 
that's how the networking works in the architecture industry that I feel. Some people might, you know, working in a particular firm, work long enough, and then they know some client, and then they come out with set up their own firm, and then they have the connection with this client, and then they bring in more projects, and then they start out from there. So if you wanted to start it by your own self, then you can always try to come up with a lot of a proposal and also competition where you test your portfolio. Because if you don't have the project, then the client don't know what you are doing and not sure what is your ability. Yeah, so if you wanted to start it off yourself, then you can go off with, you know, your own project, for example, like how I did it. I, I did it by my own self. I know what I wanted to do and I started it off um, without, without, you know, like working in an architecture firm. I started off and then I say, I, I don't have experience, but I just do it. Um, small oh. projects is fine, you know, small projects to start it okay. off, allow you to equip yourself to learn things differently. Or another way, more professional route, then you have to work in the practice, you know, you, you work in an office, then you start to realize how do you want to get client later on? That's another long journey, um, in my opinion. But in order to get a client, usually you really network. Perhaps you want to start from your family or start from your friend or start from yourself. You need to fork up a little okay. bit of money to, or, or not maybe not, not even money, but resources, you know, to, to try do things like, okay, Kevin, I wanted to do a pavilion. Let's do something fun. When, while you're still a student, for example, then you do something and then people will start to realize, oh, you did something. Yeah, I mean, of always uh try experiment with different kind of uh, works. I would say, yeah. Oh, okay. So it based on so it based uh for the first time clients. I think it it will be suitable if we get from the close friend or a fam another or a close family member, isn't it? Yeah, I think most of the time it happens that way. I, okay. My first project is actually because my school, where I study. Oh. So, you know, you won't, you won't suddenly go to a school that you don't study before, you're not sure before, you know. So you start off the project with someone you know, definitely. Um, it's either they get to you or you get to them. There's only two ways, you know, one way or another. Yeah. So that's what I feel. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you, if you can't, again, if you can't find a job, just make a job. You can always make a job. You can always do a pavilion by your own cost. But just be careful. As long as you're happy, then that's fine. That's what I feel. Yeah. And make a job and make some works uh, as long as I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because works are, I think works are quite evident. Uh, they are quite evidently speaking. They, they will appear there. Okay, thank you. Thank you right, for, good the, luck. Yeah. for the answer. Yeah. Yes, and, and, and sorry if I just if I just join if I just join right now for this class. <laughs> oh, don't worry. We can keep in touch uh, on, on social media definitely. Oh, oh well, okay, thank you. Thank you Thanks. very much, Kevin. Yes. All right. Uh before I give a conclusion about this tonight's event, I would like to ask Gary about, uh, to ask Gary about giving, please, please give us a closing statement or what do you want to say to the audiences? Um, closing statement. Well, I think, I think can go back to the theme that I, you know, I wish to deliver It's called Young Dumb Broke. Um, I think I think along the way we should should of course there is always this kind of dualistic um behavior. It's like a balance where you need to ensure that you don't want to getting too young and naive, or you don't want to you know don't have young and naive quality. So young dumb bro is kind of like a balance where you you wanted to grow up as well, but yet at the same time you wanted to keep that certain idea of na naivety to you know to be more curious um, and also be more experimental. Um, dumb in a way, you always knowing that you're not knowing enough so that you can learn more and more. You always ensure that you are not the most clever person on earth. 
you always wanted to learn something, you always wanted to, you know, thirst for knowledge and broke in a way to be more frugal, to be more aware of the resources, um, to be more understanding of what are you spending on and then what, what are the return if let's say there's any and also what's the cost. If let's say I'm, <laughs> it's like, I'm 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 doing a I'm doing a project and then it's gonna kill a lot of people. Then that's not worth it, right? I mean that's that's the, or even like what well, I want to do a project and then so so is is million ringgit is million dollars for just one small project. Then I don't think that's that's kind of project that I wanted to do. You know, it's like more of understanding the humane, you know, more fundamental down to earth projects that I always wanted to do. Um. So yeah, I think thanks a lot for invitation. I really happy and enjoy the sharing session and thanks a lot Hanifa, Nama and also Real Rick and team and Omar thanks a lot thank you so much Gary uh, I would like to deliver a message from Real Rich. he is unable to attend tonight because he has right, business right. to do and ah, no he, say, he said that you are amazing young person <laughs> and <laughs> I think you are such a unique person <laughs> Thank you. From, from what I learned from you, it reminds me of a quote from Muhammad Beniswara. He is a well-respected senior architect and urban designer in Indonesia. Mm. He said that not all the buildings are architecture and architecture is not just about building. Architecture is beyond building. The way of you thinking and do a real act about what you've been thinking through your platform is a reflection of what architecture teaching you or forming the way of your thinking. You know, designing is about problem solving and creative thinking. You expand the architecture subject in several directions through your platform. I really enjoyed the whole presentation and conversation with you tonight. Thank you so much, Gary. I would, I look forward for another chance to meet you again. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, yeah. Um, and for audiences who is joining tonight, thank you for your enthusiasm and also the Maha Library team, Real Rich, Hanifa, Satria, and Nuluk. Thank you so much. Uh, don't forget, we still have Joyi from Concrete Matter and Hazik from Lanai for the next session. So please bear with us. <laughs> thank you very much. I'll give you back the session to the host, Hanifa. Okay, okay, thank, thank you, you, Nirma, and thank you, Gary, for the presentation. Uh, he's been very enthusiastic and also accommodative while preparing for this talk. It's very nice to have this discussion, and also I hope that Omaha Library and Project XYZ can collaborate in the future. Oh, hopefully. yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the near future. Okay, thank Please you so much. Uh, look forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, before we close this event, let's take a group photo. Uh, let's take a group picture. So everyone, please turn on your camera. Don't forget to share your testimonial through the link that we've shared in the car the chat room. Okay, oh, everyone. Hi, JJ. <laughs> hi, Caleb. <laughs> All right, we'll take the picture now. One, two, three. Okay, once again, one, two, three. All right, that's all. Thank you so much for tuning in for the Zoom audience and also for Instagram audience. Uh, see, see you again, again in, in the next Tua Tua Bye. Thank Bye. you very much. Bye. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. See you then. Thank you very much.